My name is Dr. Rebecca Cliff, and I am the founder and the director of a nonprofit organization here in Costa Rica called the Sloth Conservation Foundation. We recently published a paper which looks at the metabolic um, implications of climate change on different types of sloth. So I think the most important thing to know here at the beginning is that sloths, everything they do is very intricately tied to the environmental temperature. They're quite unique among mammals in that they can't regulate body temperature very well. So if it's too hot, then the sloths are too hot. And if it's too cold, then the sloths are too cold. Um, so we were really interested in obviously looking at the issue of climate change and how th this might affect them. Um, and this issue really sprung to light when I was, because I've been here working with sloths for 15 years in Costa Rica. And um, during that time, I've worked a lot with rescue facilities. And we would see sloths arriving from different areas of Costa Rica, and they all look very different. So sloths from the highlands have this dark brown fur. They look a little different, that the fur is much thicker. Um, and whenever they were moved to the lowlands for a rescue situation, then they wouldn't do very well. They'd, they'd lose a lot of weight very quickly. Um, and they tended to have a very low survival rate. Um, and that really sparked something in my mind, thinking, well, why? It must be something to do with the temperature here. Um, and so we conducted a study um, where we used a metabolic chamber. So we monitored the oxygen consumption of sloths at different temperatures. Um, and we did this for sloths originating from different altitudes throughout the country. Um, and as we expected, the sloths from the high altitude areas have a very different metabolic response um, when the temperatures get really high. So anything above about 32 degrees for a, a sloth in the highland forests, um, then this is a problem. Their metabolic rate starts to increase too much. They start to burn through far too much energy. Um, and so we use some climate change predictions um, for the next century and the results were, were actually a little bit depressing. <laughs> um, it, and it's that essentially sloths in the lowland, um, they have a little bit more metabolic flexibility. So what we were seeing is that when the temperatures got high above 32 degrees, sloths in lo the lowlands are able to suppress their metabolic rate. So we don't know how they do this yet. We'll need to do a lot more research to, to understand that. But they're able to depress their metabolism. This helps them conserve energy and stops them just spiraling out of control. Sloths from highland areas aren't able to do this. So as temperatures keep rising, then their metabolic rate keeps increasing and they just burn through their energy very, very quickly. Um, and so with the climate change predictions, you know, what we saw is that um, with increasing temperatures, then, then our highland sloths really don't have very many places to go. You know, a sloth in that area, they can't migrate to a cooler region. Um, they're trapped. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of a, of a depressing result, but um, also very important, I think, because it really, um, it really pushes us to do something now before it's too late for those, for those populations. I think the most important thing um, people can take away from the research is that, you know, the survival of those sloth populations is now very much intricately tied to what humanity does next. Um, we are in this really crucial zone right now where um, the future of our planet and the future of climate change really depends on our actions right now. Um, and if we want to do something to protect those populations, then um, then yeah, we have to act. There's no more time to waste. Um, and that applies for our work too as a conservation organization. We need to be prioritizing work in these areas to make sure that those sloths um, have access to the microclimates that they need. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it just is a, a call to action, I think, um, that we need to act. So this research was actually conducted quite a long time ago, um, and we've been monitoring sloth populations ever since. So it's been about 10 years and we're still going, um, still trying to better understand how sloths are responding to changing conditions. That includes temperature. Um, and also habitat urbanization and fragmentation um, in all areas. So we've got a lot of on ongoing long-term projects, one called the Urban Sloth Project, which looks at sloths in developing areas. And, and one of the most interesting things we're finding with that is that the most important factor for them, again, is access to microclimates to help them regulate their body temperature um, when their rainforest home starts to get disturbed. So. Um, there's a lot more to learn. We, we, <laughs> we've got a whole research team out there every day um, trying to understand how the sloths are adapting to our very quickly changing world. 
um, and the best ways that we can help them moving forwards as well.